experiencing vehicles for the first time now very very thick vegetation where this this knob thorn has been pushed over many many years actually sorry it's a marula not a knob thorn uh, she's not happy with us i'm sorry girl i'm sorry and it's not me making a note also shouldn't be three vehicles here little one has crawled through to the back of just make very slow movements eh? gave us a little bit of a snarl. Seems to be only one cub that we can see for now. Did you get that on camera? I did. Good for you. Yeah, she's just calling it back now. She probably wants to suckle. Amazing that she's brought the cub here probably a few days ago, maybe even yesterday. coming back, it's coming back to her. No one's coming back to her. Uh, I can see a little bit of movement at the back there. I don't know if it... Has it gone back again? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately these guys mustn't move around too much with the vehicles. A little bit too much activity here. See we would never have known that that's what she was doing. She was coming back here all along. Now that we followed her here and that the cub is here maybe it can be controlled a little bit differently but oh, the cub's just here now behind her oh. It's a tiny, I think one of the smallest leopards I've ever seen. Just try and reverse a little bit. One. As soon as there's movement, the cub sort of hides, but it'll probably come out again, I hope. Um, my heart is beating, because this is just really an incredible moment, and I've been very, very lucky in the past to have that moment of seeing her cubs for the first time. But the last time I had this experience, they were a lot older than this little one. They were already running around with her. Uh, Age-wise, I'm guessing maybe about three weeks, four weeks. Morning Bob, wanting to know what are the chances of mum and baby moving away by tomorrow. I think Bob your guess is as good as mine. There's a chance that she'll still be here and there's a chance that she'll have moved. It's 
especially start now that she's now that uh, I don't know this is a behavioral thing this is something that only Karula can tell and I don't even think if she could talk right now she'd be able to tell us I think it'll all it'll all hinge on what transpires in this area over the next 24 hours whether or not she moves or takes it with her or she leaves it here and goes off and hunts somewhere else whether she's using this as a as a temporary den site very difficult to to be able to predict what an animal is is or isn't going to do oh, oh, oh the hyena coming in this is not good this is not good at all jumped down and gave the hyena a good smack. This is very, very bad. You're horrible. Children. Go away, children. My heart is even beating more now. In fact, I'm starting to shake. This is one of the tensest moments in any cat's life. Not only a cat that is a solitary cat, but a cat that's got a cub. A hyena probably sniffing around because there is an old carcass here. Just behind us. From a fairly large animal. I think so. Yeah, they've got it. Oh man. Oh man. Oh boy, this is sad. I've just got shivers. This is terrible. Probably one of the worst moments anybody can have when you're living in the bush and you're exposed to the wonders of nature. It is, is a, a really horrible thing to witness, but there's nothing that can be done. There's nothing. There's nothing that could have prevented this from happening. Up here for one minute and then I'll move. Yeah. There was only one. 
I only saw the one. Yeah, I just saw one. And that missing balega with the pipa. Yeah. It took it from this slit from here. Um, there is a pretty deep hole underneath it, that fallen marula tree, which is where she probably had it, but for some reason, I don't know, for some reason, maybe with the noise of the, of the hyena being here. Could be that the cub came out of that hole, just behind her, at the, 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 the root base of that fallen marula tree was a deep hole and if the cub had stayed in there oh my word this is terrible This is the first time in any of her litters that she's lost a cub. So she's been a very good mum up until now. I can't... Look at her, she's looking back at the hole. She's... Oh, turn this volume down. The... Uh... That vehicle should not have children on it making a noise. Um, I don't know what to say, folks. It's just, it's, I'm speechless. It's just a, a moment in time that we just happen to witness something that has been going on for millions of years. A conflict of predators. She tried her best. She fought with them. She even jumped onto that one hyena's back. She jumped out of the tree and actually gave it a good nip and a good claw. But I think the more she was determined to fight the more they knew there was something that she was fighting for but they could also smell it there's no doubt that there's the scent of a cub here we did only see one I don't know if there was another one there was only the one cub that was visible but those hyena came out of nowhere there was uh, unusual how they just appeared they must have picked up the scent and just honed straight in on her it was so quick and the, and the, the persistence of hyena if they know something's up they're not going to give up easily I've seen hyena sitting under a tree with a leopard killing up at the top and they'll wait until the very very last for any scrap that might fall or for a chance to have a snap at the leopard when it comes down What's interesting is that once they got what they wanted, they've gone. They left her alone.
Well, the other thing is that being a cat, she can come into Easter's fairly soon. She'll come into Easter's within the next few weeks, even. Strong possibility that within four or five months, maybe six months or more, she might even have more cubs. Don't know whether she'll wait until next summer. It's obviously a lot better in the wet season, better hiding places. But it's not necessarily a summertime thing. For her, it's always been that she comes into Easter's when her cubs are sort of just under two years old. So that's almost on the birthday, on the second year birthday of her previous litters when she's giving birth to her next litter. So that kind of that cycle has now been broken for the first time. This being her fifth litter. It would be interesting to find, to, to obviously, to follow over the years to come, the next year or so, to see whether or when she, she, she gets covered again. Yeah, it's picking up to the, uh, the guinea fowl calling again, for whatever reason, they're starting to make a noise again. The obvious answer is, well, we, we have to stand back here, we, we can't do anything. And as much as the heart and as much as the, even the mind is tempted to and desperately wanting to, to change the course of events, there isn't physically anything that can be done. There would have been, I mean, two very aggressive hyenas and one very aggressive leopard. How does one even begin to, to, to change the outcome of something like that did. Of course the question is if we weren't following her we would never have known. We would have been in the dark completely. We, we would have been looking for her cubs for weeks to come and wondering why she wasn't bringing them out. And eventually I guess we would have got the message that maybe they didn't survive. Um, that's not the first time Leopards have lost cubs, certainly the first time ever on camera, which is not a great thing. Although it has been filmed for documentary purposes in other, in other parts of Africa. I don't think we've ever had this on live, on a live broadcast with the loss of a cub. It's almost like she's bewildered. It's almost like she's... not quite sure what to do next. Being the first time, I guess, that she's lost a cub in this way.